Hey, I remember this company. Well, that was quite a contrast between logos. And here comes Penwick, probably the most obscure main character in a video game ever. But he's a cool guy. Hey there, I'm Penwick. I'm a flightless aquatic bird, otherwise known as a penguin. Whoever said that penguins can't fly never knew a penguin with his pilot's license. Let's go sign you up for a license too, and you can join me for some high flying fun. So of all the animals they could have picked, they chose a bird that can't fly as our in-game flight instructor. That's actually kind of funny. Now type your name in the box to sign. This is the control tower. This is where you can make. Okay, let's get ready to fly. First, click the start button to crank up the engine. Would you believe that this old game works perfectly with an Xbox 360 controller? Maybe I need to stop being so surprised about things like that. I guess any game with joystick support should theoretically be compatible with it. And just like that, we're off! Hey, what happened there? Maybe we need to work on our landing. Maybe a flight instructor should actually instruct me on how to fly instead of only telling me to flip the power switch. Over 5 million people take a look at it every year. So yeah, it has fun little facts about each location. My god, look at the terrain. It's like I'm playing with SimCity 4's terraforming tools in real time. I mean, it's an old 3D game, so I don't expect much in terms of draw distance, but that looks so weird. Oh, and the accelerator seems to override momentum in mid-air. You'll need to build up speed when taking off from the ground, but once you're in the air, you can accelerate to full throttle or slow down to a stalling speed immediately. That's not okay. If I can wreck the plane by slamming into the ground, how does a sudden stop in midair not damage the wings or the fuselage of the aircraft either? To take a picture for your scrapbook. You know, I'm actually enjoying flying through here right now, seeing how close I can skim over the ground. Yikes. What goes up must come down. You know, that doesn't Welcome necessarily make me feel power. better. Here's where you I guess it's better than getting wait. scolded, though. That's the second jet I've wrecked in under two minutes. Oh yeah, I have to zoom in to select anything. Now this game runs just fine on 64-bit Windows 7, but the text gets glitched when you try to select a different area. I don't remember that ever being a problem before in Windows 98, but it's difficult to read anything. Okay, I think it says New York. What are you doing, Penwick? You told us yourself that you're a flightless bird. Why? Ugh, never mind. Here you can choose the type of airplane you want to fly. Yeah, let's switch Just things up a bit. Mm, yeah, I'll go with the Tiger plane, or the biplane, whatever it is. Let's go. Okay, let's get ready to fly. First, click the start button to crank up the engine. New York City starts your takeoff area in a location where there are a bunch of buildings in front of you, which in this day and age is weird, to say the least. Each of these areas should have a runway somewhere, if I remember correctly. Why not start there? And this game is old enough that it still has the World Trade Center in it, but at least none of these structures have collision detection, so the only thing you have to worry about is the ground. The game CD and CD case say copyright 1998 on it, so this game is actually about 19 years old as of this recording. And, yeah, there they are. This is actually pretty sad, seeing these buildings in a kid's game where everything is just innocent and I stalled. Great. Hang on, I need to change the camera view and I'll turn in another direction. Also, whoever made this game, only the North Tower had a TV antenna on it. The South Tower just had an observation deck. Like, come on, guys. Use the throttle to control how fast you're going. I'm pretty sure I understand the function of the throttle at this point, especially since you gave me a medal for playing this game for a half hour so far. New York Central Park opened in 1876. It took 20 years to build the park. Yeah, that's cool. I'm gonna land, though. Ouch! That was a bit rough. Let's try that again. Uh, Alright. Come on, gently now. 
Come on. Take it down more gently, so it doesn't bounce so much the next time we land. I'm trying. Ouch! That was a bit rough. Let's try that again. It's coming back to me now. No matter how gently I try to land, he always tells me I wasn't gentle enough. I don't know how to touch the ground any more slowly than this. Well, I guess I did it right that time. Now slowly move the throttle lever to make the airplane go faster. Why would I want to do that? All I wanted to do was land. Sure, you could do a touch and go, but I want to see what other areas of the map I can fly around in. There you go again, trying to take off. For a flight instructor who teaches kids about how to fly planes, you seem to be forgetting basic essentials, such as moving forward to okay. create lift. Let's get ready to fly. First, click the start button to crank up the engine. As you can see, Cape Canaveral starts you off in the ocean. At least I assume that's what these blue tiles are supposed to represent. Why would you want to take off in an airplane so close to Launch Complex 39 anyways? There are runways for the space shuttle to land, though. Why not take off there? Speaking of which, you can see one of the shuttles on that crawler unit. It would be cool if you could fly into space while you're at it. Oh, and real quick, watch. See? No collision detection. You just go right through it. But the vehicle assembly building has such a large internal volume that it never seems like you go through the whole thing at once. Did you know that the building is so large it has its own weather where rain clouds develop inside on humid days? Yeah, look at that thing. It's enormous. Okay, now what? Should I try... Uh-oh. Oh no. Hey, what happened there? Maybe we need to work on... Welcome How about back to the... no? Let's try this plane instead. Florida's Cape Canaveral was chosen as a site for rocket launches in the 1950s because the city is near the ocean, making over-the-water launches possible. I like how they at least put in enough effort to give each plane a different looking cockpit. I'm not sure if the shuttle was given much visual detail though. It doesn't look like it, but that's okay. Hmm. Nothing else out here. Let's go somewhere else. I have no idea what that says. This text glitch is annoying. Okay then, Seattle. We're see if you want to land, move the throttle lever to make the plane go a little slower. Okay, I thought if I chose the landing option then it might put me somewhere with the runway in front of me, but instead I get more skyscrapers. After an Indian chief who had befriended early Hey, what happened there? What's this? They look like green eyes staring back at me. Maybe it's a gremlin, I don't know. Welcome back to the control tower. Ta on this screen, you can- Oh right, you can actually just turn crashing off. Yeah, that's nice, we'll try that out. Maybe we'll try a place with a runway too while we're at it. You can choose what time of day- Let's- if you want to land... Oh, isn't that just great? Still no runway, but they put the Golden Gate Bridge in front of us now. And it doesn't even have a solid gray surface as a road, just two thin lines. Also, if you wanted to do stunt flying around famous landmarks, that might be okay for a kid's game in the pre-9-11 era, but at least give me that when I select the second option where I'm already in mid-flight, not when I choose the third option for wanting to land. Let's try that again. How about you let me do what I want? If you give me the option of just bouncing instead of crashing, then obviously I'm going to mess around with that too. That was a bit rough. Let's a bit rough, again. he says. Well, at least this area isn't totally flat, so I guess they took some topography into account. Ouch. That was a bit rough. Let's try that again. I agree. Let's try that again. What happened? Don't tell me I actually landed. Oh, never mind. Whoa! Down more gently, so it doesn't bounce so much the next time we land. Ouch! You're a cartoon. You can't feel pain. Welcome back to the control tower. 
If you want to change I to think a these buttons game, represent different levels it. of difficulty, but I'm not sure anything actually changes. This book is a place yeah, this is one of those games where you can take pictures and then print them out. Remember when that was such a novelty back then? The lava bed now. That was a bit rough. Let's try that again. I'm not sure where I went, Thank other than the fact that he mentioned the lava beds, but all I saw were rolling green hills. Weird. Denver Surely the one of these places is a runway for me to practice landing people. on. Come on. Welcome back. Okay, Los Angeles has got to have... And they don't. What is this? I mean, I guess the terrain isn't really an issue unless it's a hilly area. Heck, you can even land on the ocean or a river or something, but come on, you have a game about airplanes, but you don't have any airports to land in? Well, New York didn't start me in a very different location from where I had to take off. Maybe they did something weird like put the runway behind me. I guess I could actually try looking around to see if they placed it off to the side or something. Oh wait, there it is! Why in the world would you put it way over there? Or rather, why would you put me so far away from the runway when I want to try landing? I get putting the airport far away from the skyscrapers, of course, but... New York come on! To Broadway, which has become well known for the plays and musicals that bring visitors to the city. I think I messed up my approach. Oh yeah, I definitely did. I'm practically flying perpendicular to the runway now. Or, well, maybe this was the runway I initially tried to go for. I don't know now. I got myself disoriented, so I'm probably going to fly away and try to circle back along a rather lengthy flight path so I have room to properly line myself up this time. Broadway, which has become well known for the plays and musicals that bring visitors to the city. Back when we were flying through the Grand Canyon, I mentioned the draw distance limitations this game seems to have when it comes to rendering terrain, but it actually does a decent job at showing buildings and other man-made structures from far away. If you want to land, move the throttle lever to make the plane go a little slower. Make sure you stay straight in line with the runway. Yeah, I know what to do, thanks. My biggest issue was getting lined up in the first place, not slowing down. Although, we'll see if I have trouble landing smoothly, too. Looks like I did a much better job this time around at lining myself up. If you want to land, move the throttle lever to make the plane go a little slower. This is ridiculous. Sure I know what to do. There's no reason to repeat yourself like this over and over again. Even a little kid should understand this. If you want to land, move the throttle lever to make the plane go a little slower. Shut up! I thought you were a cool guy. Come on, man. This is absurd. Alright, well now for the moment of truth. Oh, nice. I did it. And without bumping up and down, too. That was a fantastic landing. Not a single bounce. Well, that's enough of that. Overall, not a bad game for something that's targeted towards children. I enjoyed it back in the day, and it even throws in little educational facts for each area in between Penwick repeating the same thing every 30 seconds. Speaking of which, the poor guy is hardly known. I wonder... Does an airplane count as advanced technology equipment? In some contexts, it certainly would, but this isn't a sci-fi game or anything, so I'll just answer no to that question. I don't know who this is. Oh ho! Now we're getting somewhere. That's a definite yes. Uh, no. Not quite. Also, Akinator's not paying attention to what I'm telling him, because he's asked me certain questions more than once at this point. I mean, yeah, sure, he's a penguin after all, but you never see him with an ice pack or anything. That control tower was probably heavily air-conditioned, I guess. I guess I have no choice but to answer yes to this one, too. What does this even mean in this context? Like, he's friendly towards whoever's playing the game, but it's not like this is an RPG where you see your own character interacting in the kid pilot world with Penwick. I'll just answer this with probably. Uh... No? I mean, being a flight instructor comes with some responsibility, and this game is certainly aimed at kids. It has the word kid in the title, but he doesn't seem to have too much of a problem with me crashing as many planes as I want. I'll say no to this one. 
What? You mean like left-handed? How am I supposed to know that? Also, we're on question 74 now, and you've asked me like one question three different times now. If you don't know who I'm thinking of, then just say so. Did I not answer a question earlier where I confirmed that yes, the character I'm thinking of is a penguin? What's with this guy? What? Five nights in anime? What is this? Okay, finally we're getting to the end here. Actually, a few weeks ago, while brainstorming this idea for the Kid Pilot video, I played with Akinator once beforehand and had to submit Penwick as an entry. I'm surprised he didn't guess his name after I described him a second time around, though. I also can't believe this video lasted roughly a quarter of an hour. I never thought it would run more than a few minutes, honestly, but hey, I surprise myself sometimes. And I realize I also promised four more episodes for Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban somewhere in episode 17. They're on the way, I promise. I know I need to keep my massive following of eight subscribers informed of my schedule and all, but I'm not sure exactly when they'll be uploaded. Hopefully sometime next week? Uh, that's the plan, at least. See ya.